quick thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Lemu and Firebringer Axel for donating $5 a month. Your support is heavily appreciated. You know that moment when you just casually tear apart reality, destroy godlike beings, and eliminate creatures far beyond human comprehension, yet nobody seems to care? Yeah, uh, welcome to this boy's life. Hello everyone, and welcome to yet another long-awaited episode of Tight Moon Character Showcase. This is a series where I take a character from the Nasuverse and use them to talk about the world's lore through the character's backstories, and finishing it up with some personal thoughts. Today we'll be looking at a more obscure boy in the Nasuverse who has a weapon that would probably make Cloud's buster sword look like a sharpened nail file. Today, we're looking at Ado Adam. Otto Edom is a very, very minor yet equally important character in the story of Notes. If you didn't know, Notes is one of the first stories ever made for Tight Moon, a piece he made as a part of a Dojin Angel based anthology called Angel Voice. It's one of his earliest works and concepts for it predate even stuff like Fate or Tsukihime, on the same level of the original Mahoyo light novel manuscript. Notes is one of the most important works to the Nasubers, one that, despite being set far into the future of it, helped establish aspects of lore that still hold true to this very day. However, even if you've read it, you may not recognize this character, and that's because he never actually appears in it. That's right, Otto Edom never appears in his own debut work. In fact, most of the information we know is once again from our holy bible of the Nasubers, character material which is the first time he is depicted along with his abilities and relevance to the story of Notes. So with this general introduction done, let's get into his character and backstory. Far, far into the future, the planet Earth is dying as humans had used up all the world's resources. As Earth is on its deathbed, it leads to a buildup of a material called grain, or space dust. Grain is an element that's prevalent in space and almost every other planet, however Earth was an exception. Grain is heavily toxic to the life forms of Earth, and in huge doses, would kill any human. To survive this, humans would evolve into two species. First off were the Ares, humans that were genetically modified through artificial methods to survive in the land of grain. They have a general human appearance, however they include genes of various other primates and animals, leading to a varied species with many different physical characteristics. Their abilities range depending on the genes they may have. Some can fly, while others have extraordinary strength. Examples of Ares include beastmen or angels, the latter who have bird-like wings. Ares are typically very prideful, only choosing mates that they think would help them produce genetically superior offspring. However, there are exceptions. The Ares, due to their power, wanted to rule the planet due to their superior lineage and went to war with the old humans in order to become the prominent species. However, in retaliation, old humans would eventually then create the second species for their side, which are known as the Liners. Unlike Ares, Liners are quote-unquote pure human, without any genetic modifications from other species. However, they are still able to survive an environment of grain. Unlike Ares, regular liners have no normal abilities, and are virtually identical to old humans. However, as more grain entered the world, the newborn liners would then implement grain into their own lifestyle and biology. Most notably, the ability to conjure night arms. Night arms are essentially weapons that are formed from the grain inside of a person. An example would be Crimson Moon Bryun Stud's weapon, also known as the Reel of the World. This led to a subspecies of liner called the Aether Liner which were liners that had the ability to create night arms within themselves. The war between the Ares and liners lasted a very long time, however conclusion was never obtained because of the arrival of the Aristoteles, or types. At this point, Earth had essentially died, and in its last moments, it called to the other plants to rid the humans off its corpse. The other plants then responded by sending their strongest creatures as representatives, those being the types, or in the world of notes, they are known as Aristoteles. During the war against the Aristoteles, there were very few beings that were able to put up a legitimate fight against them, mostly due to the otherworldly natures of Aristoteles making them unable to actually die. One of the few people who could combat them was a single lone ether liner named Otto Edom. Otto Edom is really just a normal ether liner, with a knight arm known as Slash Emperor. Slash Emperor is a blade that grows to the size of its enemy, and against the Aristoteles, Slash Emperor was able to show its true potential. 
In order to combat the Aristoteles, Slash Emperor was a weapon that was able to grow to an immense size so large that it brought Otto Edom above the clouds. He used this weapon and cleaved type Jupiter in half, killing it instantly and creating a massive explosion that burnt one of the final continents on Earth and killed almost all the true humans on the planet. After witnessing its power, both Aetherliners and Ares feared the potential that Otto Edom had and thus joined forces to imprison him so that he may never use his abilities unless truly necessary. He was imprisoned into the Witch Swift Umbrella, inside of the Great Rift, where he would remain there until Type Saturn would eventually invade Earth. During this battle, Otto would eventually be released to battle against the Aristoteles, and in this battle, the final human of the planet, Gun God, would lose his life. And the fight would end with Otto Edom ultimately destroying Type Saturn leading to a final confrontation between humanity and whatever remained in the solar system. Any further information of the fate of humanity is unknown. Otto Edom is a very hard character to talk about since it's not really there. The most that he has is merely lore linked to that of the concept of Aetherliners and the things that he does rather than the actual character himself. It's really hard to talk about Otto since he's more surrounded by lore than any actual character, but honestly, to me at least, that's what makes him interesting. His abilities are so impressive and his feats leave such an impact in the world of notes, yet we don't even know who this mystery man is outside of his actions. He's like an unsung hero of sorts, one that we know nothing about. His actions save the world, but he's also feared for his abilities. It strikes my curiosity. And honestly, I just want to know more about him. It's what keeps me interested. Now for abilities and quirks, like most things in notes, the details come from loose descriptions in material books since there are so little depictions of the things actually happening in notes. So take most of what I say here with a grain of salt, as it could be wrong, retconned, or modified into the future. First off, Otto Edom is of course a liner, and is thus able to survive in the world of grain with little issue. Moreover, he is one of very few ether liners, which means he is able to harness the grain in his bones in order to create his own unique night arm. Otto Edom's night arm is named Slash Emperor, which takes the form of a seed in his palm when inactive. Slash Emperor is a blade that matches the size of his enemy, so against a normal human, it would be the size of a normal human. However, against an Aristoteles, it had potential to grow into a massive size. When Otto requires Slash Emperor to grow to such a size, the bottom of the sword directly plants into the earth and takes in grain directly from it. The larger it grows, the more grain it requires to form and at full size, it is shown to demonstrate strange properties, such as being able to reverse the state of what's around it into their quote-unquote truth. What this truth aspect is is extremely vague and it's not explained whatsoever. It is only depicted that inside the blood-red sky of notes, the air around it turns back into the clear blue sky that the Earth used to have, which is why the sword always seems to have this bluish aura around it. It's not a glowing aura, it's just that the sword converts the red sky around it into blue air. Some people have theorized that it's similar to the truth factor of Aea, with the difference being Aea's power reverses what it hits into Genesis, or creation, and Slash Emperor instead reverses thing into what we now call modern day Earth. Or at least, what things are meant to be. Regardless, we assume it's able to use this to target the original existence of things to bypass any superficial laws or aspects that creatures may have. This combined with its massive potential size is what allows Otto Edom to cleave Aristoteles and destroy them in a single strike. An extremely insane feat that many, many characters or creatures in the Nasuverse could never hope to do. It's because of this extreme power that he was feared by other humans and imprisoned because they didn't want him to abuse his true power. Safe to say, even in the future world of notes, he is powerful and at full potential, makes a case for one of the most overwhelmingly unstoppable forces in the entirety of the Nasuverse. It's all due to his sword, Slash Emperor. That weapon is one to be feared, and his entire relevance all stems from that one aspect. For personal thoughts, if you've talked to me about notes, you'd know that Otto Edom is arguably one of my favorite aspects from the story. And Slash Emperor makes a case for one of my favorite character abilities in the entirety of the Nasuverse. Yet, all of that love is built on an extremely shaky foundation. The truth is, nobody knows a lot about Otto, me included. His feats may be fact, but his abilities are obscured with brief, vague descriptions that Nasu gave to us in a single book. 
His character is essentially non-existent, so we really only have his feats and what we know of him to build off of. That being said, I really do love the concept of Otto Edom. He's a superpower that I think is really awesome, and Slash Emperor just appeals to the inner 5-year-old voice inside me that just loves giant overkill weapons of death. If there's one thing I want from Notes aside from like an actual adaptation of what we got so far, it's expansion on Otto Edom. I want to know what kind of person he is. Is he a good person or not? Personality? Heck, appearance. We have no details and I'm very curious as to what they may be. I want to know more about his story and some depiction of it. What can we expect from him? And most of all, I just want to see the true magnitude of Slash Emperor destroying an Aristoteles described or shown to me in vivid detail. That day, if it ever comes at all, would be one hell of a day to remember. Anyways, that's all for this episode of Tight Moon Character Showcase. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a bit more about this lesser known dude with a pretty cool sword. Regardless, that's all for now, although there is always a chance I'll see you somewhere else on the internet. Until then, I'm gonna ask you to take care. Have a good day.